Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Chef Vic Cuisine. Today, we're making seared ahi tuna. You want to impress some guests? Pull out a tray of these. Each slice is packed with so much flavor, and to top it all off, it's served with avocado and soy sauce. So, let's get started. Alright, so for the ingredients, you're going to need two one-inch thick sushi-grade tuna steaks, some kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste, two tablespoons of white sesame seeds plus some additional if necessary, two tablespoons of black sesame seeds plus some additional if necessary, two tablespoons of olive oil plus some additional for coating the tuna, one teaspoon of sesame oil, one avocado that you're going to thinly slice, a handful of fresh cilantro, and finally three tablespoons of soy sauce. So to get things started we're going to prepare the tuna. Now normally when you get a fresh sushi grade tuna steak they're probably going to cut it for you at about two inches thick and that's just to maintain the integrity of the meat. So unless the market you purchase the tuna steaks from cuts you one inch thick pieces, you're gonna have to do that yourself. And it's really easy. All you have to do is lay your tuna steak flat on a cutting surface and place a sharp knife about halfway through the thickness of the meat. And in a slow sawing motion, you want to cut through the tuna steak as best as you can all the way through. And you want to be gentle with this process as tuna steak is pretty fragile and it tends to tear and break apart. So for preparing the topping for the tuna steaks, all you want to do is take a small bowl and pour in both the white sesame seeds and the black sesame seeds into that bowl. And you can use a fork or small whisk to whisk that about until they're all evenly spread. And I know plenty of marketplaces sell sesame seeds pre-mixed between the black and white sesame seeds as well as another option for you guys. Now back to the tuna steaks, you want to sprinkle both sides of the tuna steaks with a thin layer of kosher salt and black pepper. You want to press that seasoning into the flesh of the tuna. And unlike real steak, you don't need that much kosher salt to enhance the flavor of the tuna steak. If you add too much salt, you're gonna end up killing the dish. Now, here's a tip on how to make your sesame seed coating really stick to the tuna steaks. You wanna add a thin layer of olive oil to both sides of the steaks, and just make sure that the olive oil has an even spread on the entire surface of each tuna filet. And here in this video, I'm just doubling back on my seasoning, just making sure that I have some kosher salt and black pepper on the edges of the tuna steaks as well. And this next step is optional for this recipe, but for all my spice lovers out there, we're gonna add some wasabi to each steak. And trust me, a little goes a long way, and even the amount I used in this video is a lot of wasabi, so you should only use this much if you really like spicy food. But with the wasabi, you just wanna make sure that you have an even spread along the top and bottom surface, and don't forget the sides of the tuna fillets as well. And I'll just say it again, don't feel the need to use as much wasabi as I did in this recipe. I just really like wasabi and the extra unique heat it provides to the dish. Now the fun part. You want to gently sprinkle on the combined sesame seeds to the top surfaces of each tuna filet first. Just making sure that you cover as much of the flesh as you can. Don't forget to gently press in the sesame seeds into the flesh of the tuna so they don't fall off so easily. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified when my next video drops. It really helps the YouTube algorithm promote my recipes for other people to see. And stay tuned to the end of this video for a sneak peek of the recipe coming next week. So once the top surface is fully coated, you want to gently flip over the tuna steak and begin adding the sesame seeds to the bottom surface. And another tip, so working with the sesame seeds and pressing them into the tuna while you coat both sides can become a pretty sticky process. 
So I'd recommend using some powder-free nitrile gloves. Those will really help with keeping the sesame seeds more on the tuna than on your fingers. And so once both the top and bottom surfaces of the tuna steaks have been coated with the sesame seeds, you wanna stand them on their edges and make sure you give all the edges of each tuna filet an even coat of the sesame seeds as well. And just another reminder, throughout this coating process, you wanna handle the tuna steaks with care as they are prone to tear and rip apart with too much handling. And so now that the tuna steaks are fully coated with the sesame seeds, we can move on to creating that nice sear. So you wanna take a large frying pan or cast iron skillet and add the two tablespoons of olive oil to it and one teaspoon of sesame oil. And you wanna bring this to medium high heat or high heat, which will range from 375 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 190 degrees Celsius to 204 degrees Celsius. And when the oil begins to smoke, your pan should be ready to use and you want to place the tuna steaks in the skillet. And all you need to do is cook both sides of the tuna steaks for about 30 to 45 seconds. And that's going to create a nice sear on all the edges of the tuna steak while leaving a nice red center. You just want to be gentle with the flipping process once you have the first side of the tuna steak cooked. Your goal is to keep as many of the sesame seeds on the tuna steak as possible, but don't give yourself a hard time if you lose a few along the way. The flavor is still going to be there and it's still going to look great too. So once the tuna steaks have a nice sear on both of their sides, you want to remove those from the heat and allow them to rest for about 5 minutes. And while they rest, you can prepare the rest of the ingredients. So with avocado, you want to slice it in half lengthwise and remove the peel from both sides. And don't forget to remove the pit as well. So once you have the avocado flesh fully exposed, using a sharp knife, you want to create thin slices of the avocado. And so by the time you've prepared all of your avocado slices, you should be ready to cut your tuna steak. So you want to cut each tuna steak into half inch thick slices and you can always add some additional sesame seeds to the areas that some of the sesame seeds were lifted from during the searing process. This helps with the overall look of your finished plate. And as you can see as I slice into each tuna steak we have that nice beautiful sear and the aroma of the toasted sesame seeds should be coming through the screen right now. This combination is so delicious, I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe at home. And here all I'm doing is doubling back on the first cuts I made to make them smaller bite sized pieces. And this recipe makes a lot of seared ahi tuna slices so it's perfect for a small or a large gathering. Now on to one of my favorite parts of the recipe, the plating. So all you want to do is take a handful of cilantro and make a bed in the center of the plate. And now on top of that bed of cilantro, you just want to place your three tablespoons of soy sauce. And now starting on one side of the soy sauce container, you want to add a slice of the seared ahi tuna. And right next to that in a clockwise fashion, you want to add a slice of avocado. And you just want to keep repeating this pattern, alternating between adding a seared ahi tuna slice and slice of avocado until the entire plate is filled. And the aesthetics of this finished dish, in my opinion, are really amazing and jaw-dropping. And just like that, you've made your very own seared ahi tuna. Whenever I go to a nice restaurant, I like to order a plate of seared ahi tuna. And now with this recipe, I hope you can make an awesome plate for yourself right at home. As always, this recipe and many more can be found in my cookbook, Chef Vic Cuisine, Volume 1 finding your inner chef and that's available on amazon and i'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description box thank you all so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this content make sure to smash that like button subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when my next video drops and stay tuned for next week where i share how to make this shakshuka dish if you haven't heard of it before trust me you're going to fall in love with this one 
Well, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week on another episode of Chef Vic Cuisine. And until then, peace.